like some porn shoot or something. Well, you've never been here, so I mean, the first thing you gotta do is just take your pants down. You gotta... <laughs> <laughs> it's like you took you took Jerry's spot, man. I did take Jerry's spot. You can't take Jerry's spot. So Jerry, it's still your spot. I'm just keeping it warm for you today. Yeah, what up? I'm here with retired veteran. <laughs> Determined veteran. Welcome back to the video, guys. We got a special guest here today. We got the... <laughs> he don't know who his guest is. I'll take it over. Yeah, what up? We're here with Marvel Kid today. We're gonna talk about these two bikes behind us because we didn't have nothing else to talk about today and I rode an hour and a half. I'm here with, I'm here with the Determined Veteran. So I know some of you guys do watch his channel. Uh, for the, those of you guys who don't, then you guys get to meet him today. See his bike behind here, we're kind of like the Siamese twins on YouTube at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, Always trying to mod each other out. Yeah, there we go. There like, you what, go. what are you doing next? Oh, I'm doing this. All right. I'm going to do it too. <laughs> I'm going to do it better than you. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Now, Bob, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to uh, the most viewers and uh, take it from there. Yeah, so my name's Jack. I'm from Determined Veteran on YouTube. So my story is, yeah, obviously, I was a veteran, Army veteran. I'm retired. Um, new Rob. to the, yeah, Hua. Oh, uh, uh, Yeah, Marines are Hua. Marine. Hua for us. Oh. Say ready, move it you like an explosion, do you understand? Yes, sir! Uh, so, you know, anyway, I build bikes that go fast, and I do it myself. And pretty. It, it, very, not as pretty as the chrome, though. I, and now I'm looking at yours, seeing the chrome, and I'm like, yeah, maybe I should have done the chrome. But then, it wouldn't have the same effect if we had both chrome bikes. Hmm. It wouldn't be the same. I mean, it just—it would just be weird. It's funny how I went the chrome route, you went the black route. It is—it is funny that way, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, my name's Jack. I'm from Determined Veteran, so uh, I'm an Army retiree. My wife's still in. My son's an ROTC. Uh, my father and my father-in-law both retired. So we have the whole Determined Veteran brand is to bring other combat vets together uh, for a common goal motorcycles and at the end of the year we always donate all of our profits back to nonprofit veteran organizations one thing i always strive for is uh veteran mental health uh -huh. you know it takes you know they say 22 veterans a day take their own life so it's kind of like because i've struggled with my own issues um that's why i, I the channel's there mm -hmm. you know and, and 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 i think all youtubers were a little bit of a narcissist because we like to be the center of attention in our own world yeah a little bit a little bit of time, so... This, this is my show right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> what you said, you myself. You know, hey, if I outstage you on your own program, you know, it's, it is what it is. But no, um, come over and check us out. We do a lot of installs, ride videos. I do a lot of wrenching myself and kind of show you, you know, for instance, how to save thousands of dollars by doing it yourself. So um, I got my upstart from a buddy of mine named uh, Xander13 on YouTube. He's an Army veteran, too. He kind of opened the doors for me and said, hey, look, you know, you're somewhat entertaining, you're mechanically inclined, you like to build things, YouTube's the place for you. And it's been about five years and been going strong. I've had six different builds, got into the Harley content a year and a half ago, two years ago when I bought Vader. I've been on motorcycles for 25 years. I just didn't know you could do motorcycles on YouTube and be successful. Yeah. And Surprisingly. Uh, yeah, so, you know, whole last year, him and I are going head to head, making videos, talking back and forth, and finally he said, hey man, you come out to the house and make a video. So, here. Here yeah, I am. It's, it's funny because we got the bike around the same time. Yeah, I got mine November of 21. Yeah, I got mine a little... Oh, 21. Okay, yeah, I got mine right... I think I got mine right around May-ish or so. Yeah, you got yours the following year. Yeah. Cause no, it's 21. Oh, 21. So 21, you got yours 21. before mine. Yeah. Yeah, I was... I was we are just a few months apart. A few months apart. Kind of like twins. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah <laughs> no, but, six months but, apart. Yeah, no, but it's funny because we have been in constant communication ever since you got that bike. And I mean, I always thought you were a pretty cool guy. Um, and then got the same bike. We're doing similar mods. And it, it's funny. I mean, you're not that far away from me. So you're only about an hour out. I'm 100 miles from you. Yeah, from so doorstep to doorstep. Nice little chilly ride today. It, yeah, my southern bones, because I'm from Texas, like... Texas forever. Yeah, and I'll tell you one thing about y'all up here in the Northeast. If you have to plug yourself into a motorcycle. <laughs> we just thought about this. If you have to plug yourself into a damn motorcycle for a 15 minute ride, take your car. 
Oh, man. Uh, you you got to make it worth it. If I'm if I'm, if I'm putting my heater gear on, because I'm going to be out there all day. Yeah. All day. Not all day. 15 minutes. For 15 minutes, I'd rather go walk. <laughs> it's not worth it. I was stationed in Minnesota for three miserable years. And Ouch. Yes. Minnesota's cold, dude. Yeah. And I would go out in the garage, look at my motorcycle, and I would cry. I would cry, you know? Minnesota's yeah. something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. But anyway, let's yeah. talk about our bikes, man. Yeah, let's, let's talk about the bike. So, I know you recently just finished installing these Baja lights uh, last week, so let's talk about that real quick. Uh, yeah, so um, install. Yeah, how, how was it the install? Easy. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, out of scale, I said in my video at the end of it, like out of a scale of you know, through ten, I'd say five is the difficulty. The the thing that makes some of these things difficult is like the amount of like work you have to do to get to it, right? Fairing, tank, you know, all that stuff. And I wear latex gloves when I do install, so I don't put fingerprints and do double work. But just the setup. And getting everything apart. The, the, That's the, what takes the longest. Yeah, yeah. The install of it was, was easy. Um, I have an amp uh, from Sinister Sound, and the bracket worked perfect. That's one of the reasons I went with the Cali Race Moto 1. Uh, the guys actually reached out to me. They saw my video. They loved it. Um, but, yeah, I, I would say it's an easy install. Most of the time people run into problems is because with the amps, because, let's say, Rockford sticks out a little bit more. That bracket may hit. Um, if... I think Carlos is using, I forgot what Carlos is using, from MVS Audio. Who did Peanuts Bike? Carlos. Carlos did it? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. His amps are, look like they stick out way more. But the y'all didn't use the Cali Raised. No, no, we, we uh, P Peanut bought another another bracket. I, I told him, originally, Peanut, you should have bought the bracket that I told you. Because <laughs> when, when I first did my install, I, did, I couldn't get it on video because it, it was me and Rebel in here having a few beers and we're like hey let me just see if this is how this is gonna work and one thing led to another and we put it on right so i made sure that when we did peanuts bike i wanted to get on film but i told him like listen use the uh the bracket that i use because the one he had purchased I'm like this it, it this seemed some brackets are not as good no and, and and truth be told like the ones that you have to put together and all this stuff like what i liked about the cali race motor one it's it's one, piece. it's one piece that saves you a lot of time to set up mine was one piece too i forgot the name of the bracket i used but. yeah there's a few different ones the only thing I would say that I would say that Cali Rays needs to improve is the bolts that bolt the actual brackets, your light buckets to your bracket, mm -hmm. need to be a little bit longer. Yeah. I know why they do it is to keep it from hitting anything, but if they made it another sixteenth of an inch, yeah, bigger or eighth of an inch, really, um, I, I think it'd been even easier. But I did it all by myself. You told me, oh, you gotta have a homeboy, and I'm like, I don't have that many friends, man, and I don't want people touching my bike. They don't know what they're doing. I, I. I I can't stand for somebody else to touch my bike. Yeah, That's it's, my thing. It's just easier. You know, you, you can do it yourself. But it's, I had someone do it with me, and we did it. We liked it out right away. It was fun. It was cool. But, um, I mean, like you said, it's an easy process to install. Um, it's just a headache to take everything apart. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I mean, the lights do a damn justice. I have still not ridden at night, so I still I need to have to. Yeah, that's, have that's have my to, next man. video i got to record after the day of me actually riding this at night. Um, just FYI, because like I put in a pinned comment, Cali Rays wants you to measure these at uh, 87 degrees. So you can take a protractor and actually measure a degree. It needs to be angled a little bit, not straight up and down. But a lot of people do. I mean, like, what's the difference between 90 I, and 87? I, I, I did my own measurement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just said, you know what? This is not too high. I'm gonna just put it right here. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because they told me afterwards, all right, well, I'm close enough. You know, yeah. if, if I take it on night and. You need to adjust, like, I don't mind taking it apart off camera and, and doing it. It's, it's just one thing. I never installed them before. I really like them. Uh, some of them announced pretty soon about headlights. So Hogworks is actually sponsoring my next giveaway. Big shout out to Hogworks. I'm wearing the shirt. They're gonna do, we're going to do either a Road Glide Light, Road King, or Street Glide for one of the fans out in the audience. Oh, nice. Yeah, I always, I always try to give back. Like, there you guys, if you guys want to join that giveaway, head over to this channel. You yeah. You're dropping us some details over there. I always try to give back to my audience because really you can make the best thumbnail, you can make the best video. If your audience doesn't engage with you and, and click with what you're doing, yeah. you're not going to be successful on the platform. Right on. But you, like I said, you have, you have your Baja lights. Mm -hmm. You love them. Why did you, why did you decide to do amber and clear, man? Are you. Honestly, I, I get that every time someone asks me, oh, why, what's the deal with the amber? I'm just, I, it just looks badass. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. It looks cool as shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's different. It looks offset. It's, yeah. That's it. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I'm OCD, so I had to do the both clears. 
I like the look of both. I like the look of both Ambers. I like the the look of both clears. And I like the offsuit. I, I think whichever way you go, you can't go wrong. So Baja actually sells covers. The covers. And so I have the cover up there. Okay, fair enough. Okay, yeah. so yeah, you know, a lot of people are asking me, hey, can you put the covers on with the with the fairing? And I'm like, absolutely, you can. There's so much room. Like there's yeah. there's like an inch, and I'd have to mic it, but um, there's like an inch between here. So no, because you need to unscrew it from the back. It don't just clip on. No. Well, yes, but this cover right here, mm -hmm. the screws in the back holding it together. So you gotta take that. You gotta take the whole thing out. Oh, that. That totally goes against what I thought was gonna yeah, happen. Nah. Yeah, so this black cover right here is where, where you see the logo. This connects with the black cover in the back and it gets bolted together, it gets screwed together. I guess so. It's, so not, in, it's in not a friction grip. Yeah, exactly. So in between both of them, that's where the casing is at. Because that's what I had to do to take the... Cause I, when I ordered them, they sent me two ambers and I wanted one white, so... Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, this video kind of ruined my plans for the covers. It's okay. I still want them, Cali Rays, you know, you if you want to send them to me. No, I mean, you're going to have to just, you know, take it apart. <laughs> all right, all right. So, um, why did you go with the uh, ST Fender? The ST Fender versus like a carbon fiber. Like um, I so I wanted a carbon fiber, and that, that, that was something I'm like, yo, that, that thing looks so sick. And there's a few companies out there who who make yours is what Hoffman. Hoffman, yeah. Hoffman makes great stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted the carbon fiber, but the ST Fender, I don't know, it was just. I, I kind of wanted to keep the look and, and the color of the of the, of the bike. Yeah, fair so enough. E even though I do love the carbon fiber look, like I I love it. Like Peanut has one on his bike, and it's like it looks sick. Yeah. I just wanted to keep the flow going with the paint. Oh nice. But what I have thought because you can get a carbon fiber and paint it and paint it and yeah. then have carbon fiber plus the paint texture on it. Yeah. And it looks sick. My audience actually said to keep rocking it. I had asked them in the poll. I love it, dude. They said, no, leave it like it is. That's cool. So I said, all right, fair enough, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're I, paying the bills, not me. Yeah, and, and you know, you got the black forks too, so it kind of looks better. Mm. On mine with the chrome, it kind of, I don't know, I think it kind of might have looked a little weird. We do have another upgrade for his bike that's going to be black. It's going to be uh, the chop bar. Oh, that yeah, chop bar. Fit. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna hook them up. Yeah, it's because I, I I got the I got the small bar. You know the reason why I want to do is because I have the the small bar lights. Oh, okay. That I want to put in the crash bars. Nice. Those are both amber. Yes. So that's all I wanted. That. Okay, so, that's gonna that's gonna be sick. Yeah. See, I want to do it on the side here. I wanted to do that too, but I was like, mm. it might be too much for the top. But if you do them amber, you do them amber. Yeah, I'm gonna that looks sick though. Yeah, I'm gonna do amber. Yeah, that looks sick. What kind of windshield you got in yours? So mine's a Clockworks, so a nine inch Sport okay. Flare. Mine's a Pro um, Tour, 12 inch. It's a Pro Tour, yeah. yeah. I, I like that one too. I kind of wanted to get something like that and clear for when I do like really low miles. So I'm, I'm trying to go to Milwaukee in July for the homecoming. I'll go with you. Yeah? Yeah, for real. So let's hit the ride. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, because right now it's only me and I think Peanuts might go and that's it. But... Yeah, y'all can come to my house, stay for the night, and then we'll leave in the morning from my house. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. We already played it out. I'm good. Yeah, cool. You but got plenty no, of room. I was gonna ride it there by myself in case he, he wasn't gonna go. But yeah, so I'm taking that. That's gonna be my my next. That might be my biggest trip. I think I'll, yeah, last year we went to New Hampshire, so that'll be my it's like a 12 hour ride. I don't yeah. know how many miles is it? I think it's like from my house. It's it's over a thousand. Oh yeah, easy. Yeah. But yeah, so when I do that trip, I want to get something way bigger just to get more coverage. Um, but I mean that one does pretty good for for the type of riding I do. Um. You're you're a little bit shorter than me. I'm uh, six foot three, and I'm like five seven. So you're like a foot taller than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's why. But for me, I had to have like I. You need some taller. I, no I need the tall regardless, yeah, yeah. and that's like when Clockworks and I were talking about, and I've used Clockworks for ninety percent of my baggers in the past. Um, I've tried other companies. I just didn't jive with them. So when Clockworks uh, reached out to me and said, "Hey man, do you want to put our?" Pro Tour on Vader, I was like, yeah. absolutely, God bless you. I got um, I got the Memphis Shades uh, windshield on it as well. I got it on top over there. I like the way the clock works. It's shaped more though. Mm -hmm. It looks, I think it's like the perfect shield for, for for that bike. Yeah, absolutely. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Why Road Glide and not Street Glide? I actually have talked about this a few times. See, the Street Glide to me, and I've owned two Street Glides in the past, the, I think the shorter you are, for instance, like your height, perfect for a street glide because you can easily accessible everything. For somebody like me, a tall bastard, 
I feel like the streak lies way too much in my right face. Right in your face. Yep. And and as far as rideability, I have a lot of neck and shoulder issues from the Army. And so the fairing going like this at 90 miles an hour is not my thing. The Rogue Live with the fixed fairing, it's much more comfortable for me. I have more longevity in my rides. Um, I don't hurt as bad afterwards. So yeah. that's why I, I, chose, I, I don't suggest anyone over 590 get a street glide. Now, I know a lot of people do. Yeah. You know, it's all a personal preference. But to me, the Rogue Glide works better for me. And then what broke my heart back in 14 when they did the Mount Rushmore, they, they discontinued the Rogue Glide. They didn't bring the Rogue Glide back until the was absent for a year and a half yeah. or so. Yeah. And so when they brought it back at 15, I was cool with it. And I bought a 17. I put 45,000 miles on that bike. I was telling you off camera, it was the first generation of the Milwaukee 8, and I had to rebuild it three times. Uh, and so I was really nervous coming into this, but uh, it's been good, and I had the stage four kit on mine. They, they fixed a lot of issues that that engine was coming with. Yeah, the old it was, uh, oil pressure, it oil was, pump was going out. It was it actually was the old pump gears. They would shatter, and then the old pump would go out. Yeah. They went through like four generations of old pumps between seventeen and eighteen, and the nineteens and up have all been very very good. Yeah, yeah they, these are these are pretty reliable now. And I had the stage four one thirty one on mine. Uh, it's a total warranty build because at the end of the day, I want to build a ride somewhere. You 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 got a one thirty one right when when right after you got the bike. Yeah. So I had actually when I when I purchased the bike, I had uh, put an order in for the one thirty one kit. I have done other you know stage twos with you know S and S cams, Woods cams. For I've done a little bit of all. M one of my things was well, I'll, okay. I'll put it this way: a lot of people they're like, oh, the one thirty one that's slow. I got you. It's a total warranty build. But if I have an issue, let's say we're going when we go to uh, Milwaukee, and I break down, if I have an SNS cam, I'm, it's coming out of my pocket. Yeah. With the warranty, you know, I can get a loaner bike, I can get a hotel room, and I know Harley's going to fix it. Yeah. Sometimes I see a lot, and I, you know, I'm big into the performance bagger. Like my bike is built to ride. The problem I see with a lot of guys that they do all this crazy horsepower. The more crazy horsepower you do, the, the less issues. miles, the and more the issues, issues you gotta yeah. do. Yeah. It, 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 the bike um, isn't that rideable. Correct. You know, it's not that rideable and, it, and it's, yeah, you're gonna go fast, but. Or they build them and they have constant issues because they don't do the supporting mods. If you build a monster engine and you're making, you know, 160, 170. You need to change everything else. You, you, you gotta be rebuild the trans. Your drivetrain, the, the Kevlar belt's not going to work for you anymore. Mm. The way I ride, I'm very aggressive. I'm always up in the power band. Um, so I enjoy that type of ride, and my bike needs a function behind mm. it. Um, a lot of guys get into, and I think it's because um, some people are YouTube certified mechanics versus actually knowing the platform and right. knowing how to do this. Like I've, I've built drag cars in the past. I've, and that's one of my passions is drag racing. And, and I'll tell you, when you go fast, you better have support money. You're going to break shit all day long. Yeah, of course. So, so, so I'd rather on a bagger, you know, I'm making, you know, 115, 135 wheel torque, uh, on this, this, this bike. And it's plenty for what I want. I mean, I could, I rode all the way over here at 95 miles an hour. No issues. Yeah. You know, so I think a lot of times, and I've seen guys, they build these motors, they don't do the trans, they don't do the drivetrain. You have to. If, if you're going to try to build a crazy monster motor and then do so much, you got to change everything else. Yep. Because it's going to blow on you, man. Yeah, right. you can't just put a cam in a tune and say, okay, I'm good with the stage four. No. I've seen guys, and the other thing is too, like on YouTube, I see guys, um, they want to make their audience and they, they put, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 in their bike, you know, between... I saw one cat, good guy, you know, got a stage four, and then all of a sudden he got a turbo kit from Trans. Like, after a while, how much power do you really need? Because you're not using it at all. And and I hope it works out for him, but I just see he's going to have issues in the, in the future. Of course, man. And you've, now you've just ruined a bike. Yeah. Because when we buy the bike, we buy it stock for the most part, right? And you have your dreams to make it. And that's what we love about Harleys because you can actually... You're so customizable. You're so customizable compared to other brands. But when you start to build a bike so ridiculous that if something breaks, you have to run a mechanic and pay $1,000 out of your pocket, that's not me. I can work on them. I can change cams. I can do, I can do all that. But I prefer that warranty that I don't have to deal with it. Does that make sense?
and I don't know, when it comes to warranty, like that's where Harley actually covers a lot of good yeah, they stuff, do. man. You know, like if obviously you're buying a bike from them, you're buying any upgrades you buy from them. If anything does go wrong with any of those motor upgrades and it's under their warranty, they're gonna cover it. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes. Me being on a motorcycle is such a peaceful existence, and it gives me so it centers me, right? Because we in our lives we have families or kids or you know work or this that and the other you know drama from this but whatever. But you're on the bike, it ain't none of that matters. Yeah. You turn up your music. I like to listen to Howard Stern. It's just me. You know, I grew up in a small town in Texas, and Howard, Howard Stern, Stern was, was it was the coolest thing on the. Howard Stern was a god back in the nineties and Yeah, the 90s, right? in the eighties. Before that, 80s, well, eighties. Yeah. Like I remember listening to him when he was in the eighties, when he was at you know Wash when he was in Washington D.C. or Detroit. Like I remember mm. when he was still on terrestrial radio. So yeah. now, I mean, that's a whole other topic. But yeah, Howard Stern or Cody Jenks on Pandora. Nice. Yeah, but yeah, the whole thing. I mean, I love my Krauss bars. Sinister Sound hooked us up with their audio system, uh, suspension, my seat from Bad Boy Cycles. Uh, Hogworks has really you know chipped in. They're doing the, the next uh, giveaway. Um, Olin's, I'm a big Olin suspension kind of guy. You got Olin's in the front and in the back. Yep. In the front, yeah. We both actually we still have, we both have the piggy back. No screaming eagle and yeah. Olin suspension. I love that suspension. I do dude. too. I love it. Everybody says, hey, what, it's not true Olin's. The only thing different about it is when you go you go directly to Olin's, you pipe. Type in your weight. That's the only thing I wish they would change on the Screaming Eagle. It's still made by Olin's. It's, it's, it's got it's, it's got a Screaming Eagle stamp. But the thing is, what trips people out is because you don't put your weight in. But the way they design it, they man, you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. And if you want to tweak a few things of the manual or tweak a few things and adjust here and there, and you're fine. It's it's, it's an old suspension with just a Screaming Eagle stamping on it. Right, and that's why I tell people. Everybody's asking, "Hey, Jack, how do you like it?" I liked it so much I gave away to a subscriber last year. Yeah, I had uh, I had Legends on mine prior to this. Yeah, and the Revos. Yeah, yeah, and I didn't have an issue with, with with Legends. I think Legends makes a great product. Um, I like I prefer these a lot more. Yeah, you know they they they're great and they have so much more settings as well. Yeah, you know, uh, it, you know Legends has always been there. I've always been an Olens, Olens, Olens yeah. type of guy. Um, Homeboy of mine has a Road King with a Fox setup. I have Fox on my truck. His bike is smooth. Fox is coming in heavy right now. It's a yeah. Segment. But it doesn't have any adjustability. I think, here's what it is. That's what I got to work with, though. Yeah. yeah. Olens, you can adjust every setting, compression, rebound. Uh, I'm forgetting something else. <laughs> compression, Sad. rebound, set, set, set. Yeah. Well, every, everyone does that. What I'm saying is you can do compression, rebound on the fly. You can you could change the rate of your spring. I mean, there's a whole there's so much to do with there's it. There's a lot goes into it. Um, and and on these bikes, I always tell people because they say, "Oh, I want a stage two. I want this. I want an exhaust." No, 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 no. Go take your ass and go with you a suspension, suspension on, that, on that bike. Yeah. Yep. I, I was I forgot what video it was. I was talking about that. I was talking about upgrades, and I'm like, "All right, well, one of the first things that people overlook that they don't do on a bike is suspension." Yeah. You know, it, dude, it's gonna you're gonna enjoy that ride so much, and it just drastically changes everything. For for example, uh, Marvel Kid here is uh, what'd you say five seven? Five seven on a right. good day. Yeah, on a good day, hundred and fifty pounds. One seventy. One seventy because he's been eating a little bit more tostones and the fun go on the back side. <laughs> I understand, man. I'm, I'm three hundred pounds myself. My wife loves to make tostones, but um, the thing is, with the stock suspension, you could probably get away with it. Mm -hmm. My size uh, can't. You got to change it because you just you're just gonna yeah. beat yourself up. Yeah. And my wife and I ride a lot of two up together. So having that where I can adjust it for her and make her experience comfortable on the bike. Yeah, right on. Is is what's up for sure. Um, what's your favorite part about being on a bike? Um, or your bike, I should say. I say any bike. I mean, I'll give you both answers. I think uh, if I had to just my favorite part of being on a bike is just like you said, it's just. The freedom. I think any Harley rider is always gonna say just the freedom of just the open road. This is my time. Um, I. It, it's the only time where you're not on a phone, where you are so focused on the road and your surroundings. Yeah. And you don't have to worry about nothing else. So if you do have a lot going on in your day and you want to clear your mind down, even turning that throttle, listen to that sound, clears your mind. And you don't have to worry about your phone. You don't have to worry about nothing, your troubles. Everything's yeah. gone. 
Yeah. For, for those sure. for those few hours, Aaron, you're on the bike, man. It's just you and your bike, and it's like you have such a connection with your bike, and it's like yeah. You know, at the moment, it's like it's profession. There's no other feeling like it in the world. Nothing. And and I'm I'm a, like you're a car guy. I used to be a really huge car guy. Like no, I, this this is its own thing, man. Man, I'm a toy guy, but yeah, I'm a Mustang guy. I, I love I love Mustangs. I think the the S650 Mustang they're coming out with is an atrocious abomination. But I digress. <laughs> but yeah, that that's uh that's my favorite part. And about my own personal bike. Um, I like the comfortability of the road bike, where I have my music, I have my navigation, it's comfortable. I have the option if I want to use it as a around town bike, it's good for that. If I want to use it for long touring, it's it's perfect for that. And um, it's a Harley, so because the Mercedes are on the list, man. That's right. That's it, pretty That's much. Didn't um, we pretty much cover everything? Well, I wanna, you got anything else to add on or any other thing you wanna know about? No, in this video. No. Okay. I think I think we've done enough yapping, like like two women gossiping in the garage. Yeah. But let's go. Let's get on the bikes. We're gonna go over to Twerk real quick. Um, check the shop out. I want you to meet Mike and um, see you guys on the road, man. As he gets set up, I'm gonna let you know it's kind of like a porn shoot. So if we get naked on camera today, um, you're welcome. <laughs> Jerry gonna be mad at me now. Oh saying I take God. Jerry's spot. You will. I think he is. <laughs> he watches you. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, not very often. He watches everybody. Because he's always sitting here in his. Car. <laughs> you can't watch. You can't. That's kind of rude. You can't watch another YouTuber as you film with you. That's right. 